Well, guys, you are looking at what apparently is a very common lock uh, in Russia. I, I don't know what it's for. I almost thought it was a motorcycle lock, but this uh, the diameter of this, uh, I'm going to call it the shackle, this plug, looks a little bit too big to be used on disc brakes. So I really don't know how this would be employed. Maybe a trailer lock? I'm, I'm clueless. I really am. Anyway, um, pretty neat. It is... An Abloy style keyway. It's got that half moon. By the way, Alexei says these cost 290 rubles, which is uh, $4.90. So pretty inexpensive um, for that price. I gotta say, it's very well done. There could be as many as, I think, 10 discs inside of this thing. It works beautifully. And it works in kind of a weird way, though, and that's gonna give us some problems. First of all, when you slide the key in and you try to turn it counterclockwise, which is typical for unlocking, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, we've seen a Russian lock before. It opened in the opposite direction by turning it clockwise, and that's the case with this one. So you turn it, what, basically a complete rotation, and then you can remove the plug. When you take a look, it's a mechanical block, so we're not going to be shimming this thing. Um, pretty well done. Let me grab my magnet here, though. I want to show you something. The, the shackle on this, of course, is made out of steel. But remember, the shackle is going to be covered up inside of the hasp or whatever, so chances are we're not going to get much of a chance to cut on the shackle. But we don't need to because this body on the lock is made out of aluminum, or for you British guys, aluminum. Um, the core, uh, the plates themselves, are steel which is, again, very unusual. Not like Chinese locks where they're made out of brass or copper or even, in some cases, aluminum. So it has a tough core. It has a tough shackle. The body is not so tough. Well, of course, I want to pick it. So the first tool you grab out of the box is uh, Old Faithful here. The problem is, this being an abloy lock, uh, the tensioner is in the very back. You have to tension the lock on the last disc, not the top disc. This is designed to tension the top disc, which is almost all Chinese locks. So this one we're not going to be able to use. You almost need a specialized abloy lock. And I've got one here. This one I got off of, I don't know, Banggood or somewhere. Hayoshi Tool, made in China, like all of our favorite tools, it seems like. The problem here is, let me pull the tip out and you see what I'm talking about. The tip is designed to pick this in the counterclockwise. So there are two tools. This one's designed for abloy. It says it somewhere right on here, but uh, it's designed to pick it in the counterclockwise. And unfortunately, I'll never get that back in there. That's why I don't have kids. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have the tool to go uh, clockwise. So we got to look at other means. Um, you could pick it by hand with a piece of wire and all of that. I think uh, there's a couple of books, How to Open high, uh, Modern High Security Locks. Um, has uh, by uh, uh, Stephen Hampton talks a little bit about how to do that but this being an aluminum lock I think there's other ways first of all let, if we were to use brute force and we will uh, this is going to be locked up in you know the disc brake or whatever gonna be in in the door so if you were to strike it right there to try to break the aluminum body you notice they've probably had that problem before so they reinforce this with the rib of aluminum there to prevent you from doing that. However, if we use leverage to our advantage, let's say we hit it it's in, the, in the door or whatever, we hit it on this side, leverage is going to work in our favor, and my theory is it's probably going to shear somewhere right in here. Even though they beefed that up a little bit, I think that will probably shear off. But I, that's loud. That's going to get a lot of people's attention, and if this truly were in a disc break, we're probably going to break or bend the disc. Kind of a pissed off customer. So, again, I'm looking at this keyway. This, the discs in her are inside are steel, not brass. So they're not going to shear very easily. So I'm thinking, defeat it with a wood screw. If I take a, this is for a deck, a, a wood deck. I'm thinking if I drive it in there, it's going to thread into those steel teeth. They're not going to shear. And I'm going to keep threading this in, threading this in, until it hits the back of the lock. At that point, I'm going to keep turning it, and my belief is that slowly but surely, it will extract that core and decore this entire lock. And the reason I think that, if you look at it here, this, I believe, uh, was painted after this disc was press fit in there. A lot of Chinese ones were that way. They're held in with like an O-ring or something. Very easy to pop them out. 
This one is quite a bit deeper, so we're not going to be using a screwdriver to pop that out. But I'm thinking maybe the wood sheet or the uh, the wood screw. We can apply the pressure and we can slowly we can shear that break and we can extract things out. If that doesn't work, I got another technique, just a slightly more violent. Let's try this first. I'm going to put it in the vise, get the camera focused so you can see it without me trying to hold it in my hands. All right, guys, got this clamped up. It's a little bit simulated here in the field. You'd have to have this mounted on a door or on your motorcycle or whatever, but uh, I don't want to hold this in my hand while we go to work on it. Anyway, it does still work perfectly. Shackle comes out and lock it back up. Shackle stays in. All right, I did get a chance to look at that. I think we're going to get one shot at this. So I am still going to use the screw, but I'm going to go right to using the slam hammer. You guys might know these from... Uh, if you've ever pulled a gear out of a car or anything like that, it's nothing but a very long bolt and just a standard bolt. This is a piece of reinforcement rod, like one and a half inch reinforcement rod. Somebody drilled a hole in, slide it in there, and then there's a, a screw on the end or a nut on the end with a hole in it through which this screw will pass like so. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to go ahead and put it into the lock and then I'll attach the slam hammer and you'll see how it works and hopefully we'll see how it works in just a second. So let's go ahead and put it in there. It's a pretty tough keyway. I started just trying to use the screw and I realized I got about two or three threads in and realized suddenly that those steel discs are pretty tough. They are not going to uh, allow me to go all the way to the back of the lock with a screw. But they will let me go in maybe halfway. Now these slam hammers are not only used for gears, but locksmiths use them to pull out SFIC cores. So that thing is solidly inside of there now. Take the slam hammer, screw that onto the threads, nice and firm, and then just slam it out of there. Let's see if we can make this work. And there you go, pull that thing right out. A little bit of noise, lickety split, but no damage to the vehicle and probably no, very little, if any, damage to the uh, to the hasp that you're trying to get this thing off of. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up all the pieces off the floor. You can see what happened though. Right here, this is the part, the aluminum part that was press fitted, and there was a slight rim that had been peened around the edge of the lock and that's what it was used to uh, hold it in place. Once you get that done, by the way, see if I can undo the, the vise here, all you've got to do is just dump all the guts out and then you can take your shackle off. So open once you remove that core. Let's grab all the pieces and do a post-mortem over at the workbench. Alright guys, Alexi had actually sent me two of these locks. I did it twice to make sure that it worked the same way. The second time was actually a little bit easier. Uh, but I think you can see here we have that ring and here's one that we can look at just a little bit closer. This looks to be a piece of aluminum, like an aluminum disc that once they get the core in place, they uh, compress this down into that groove to keep us from doing exactly what happened here, pulling the, the entire uh, core out. Inside of there we had a total of nine of the discs and you can see there are no false gates on these. There's just one primary gate and in fact the sidebar, the thing that prevents it from dirty, doesn't actually extend uh, along all nine of them. It only goes, on, uh, I'm guessing, about the length of seven discs. Uh, we have, these are indeed steel, steel discs and then these little brass spacers in between them so that when one disc turns that keeps the one in the, the the adjacent one from turning as well. Very well thought out. I'm surprised at the high quality of the materials in this thing. Uh, the actuator itself uh, is made from aluminum. It is not plastic so we're not going to be able to melt it like in some of the Chinese ones. These look like discs but these are the locking mechanism for the actuator. There are There are three of them that fit on there. I'm just going to go with two because I want to show you how this works and it's a little awkward with three. All right, I'm going to just slide the actuator hopefully up inside of the body and then use my finger as the key and I think I can turn it and you can see how that works. So very cool mechanism. 
very simple mechanism and reliable. Unfortunately, the weakness on a lot of these uh, these distainer locks are the mechanism that they use to hold the entire core in place. So we extracted it out pretty easily, but for a five dollar lock, this is an awful lot of trouble to go to. So you know, this they say that this is a six, and I honestly believe it. I think this is well worth 290 rubles, or about which is four dollars and 81 cents. I would hate to run across a 10. I'm not so sure I'd be able to find a way to get into that quite as quickly as we did into this thing. Anyway, Alexi also sent what he says is some of the sweetest chocolate in the world on the planet Earth. Uh, he says to make sure everybody understands that chocolate was invented in Russia, and this is some of their finest. I'm about to find a way to get into that now. Anyway, thanks, Alexi, for the locks. Let me play with these. I don't often get to see these. Everybody else, thanks for your time, your patience, stay safe, and of course, stay legal. Mm -hmm.